Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how you can build a multi AI agent research system using the brand new OpenAI Agent Builder. This is going to allow us to take a request from the user and then classify which of the AI agents in our system is best fit to answer that question it will move down the flow to that agent. And you can see on the screen now, this is the agent builder. And this is an example that I've built out. I'm going to rebuild this entire flow to showcase exactly what I'm talking about. The goal here is to dissect a flow into multiple individual agents that are going to be the best agent to answer that particular question. And to give you a practical example, in this particular flow, we've got our start node where we send it a message. It then classifies our message into a particular category. Now this example is an internal knowledge base assistant for manufacturing and supply chains. The use case here is that a company would have this as their sort of internal chat system that they would be able to reference to ask questions about the different policies within their company. And so if somebody has a particular question about demand forecasting, we are going to be able to classify that request within these four different categories of inventory, production, logistics, and supply chain network. If the initial request is to do with something related to demand forecasting, our agent here should be able to pick that up as being inventory related. It will then get sent to the next agent, which is then another classification agent, which is going to determine if this is either for demand forecasting or one of the other options here. In this particular case, you can see the agent settings on the right here, and we've got a tool which does a file search. And this file search is linked directly to this AI generated sort of SOP document related to demand forecasting. And because this agent has this document, it's able to reference whatever it needs to be able to answer their question as precisely as possible. The real big benefit here is just the amount of control that we have over the responses and which agents are being used for which. Comparing this to something like a GPT where we only have a single prompt and then we also upload a bunch of files and it has to figure out this entire flow itself, we obviously don't have much control and the likelihood that an error occurs is just far greater. I'll show you this particular agent in action by picking out a particular bit of data from this document and seeing if we're able to run through the flow and get to the exact agent that we're looking for and get a response back. So let's say we want to understand what the forecast coverage target amount is, which in this case looks to be 90. You don't need to understand anything about logistics here. We're just going to be looking for the answer of 95% for the forecast coverage target for this particular internal SOP document. So I'm going to go back to our agent here. I'm going to jump into preview, which allows us to actually talk to the agent. And I'm simply going to tell it what is the forecast coverage target. We'll send that through. Hopefully that's not too vague of, uh, of a response, but we'll see if we can get it all the way to the demand forecasting agent in this particular case. And if we can get a response back as well. So here we go. It looks like we have been able to hit the demand forecasting agent, which is awesome. Uh, you can see it obviously went through the inventory optimization uh, classification agent as well, which is exactly what it needed to do. It's still doing a bit of research and there we go. So it researched it. The target is 95% forecast coverage, um, i.e. forecasts available for 95%, which is pretty much exactly what is being said here on the document, of course. And we can see here exactly the type of searches that it actually made in order to get to that answer. And we've even got the source at the bottom here. Obviously, if we had more than one document, then it would reference multiple sources if it needed multiple sources. And we can see the exact source that we got it from. Now, whilst this example is pretty simple and we're really only looking for a small bit of information in a document that isn't too big. And with a single prompt, we probably would have been able to get the same answer with. I really want you to understand the sort of structure and approach that we're taking here. And the fact that we can build this out to be bigger. And so that if we do have larger system prompts and we do have 10 files related to a particular agent, which is very likely in the case of an internal system just like this, we're gonna be able to get these answers much and far more accurate than something like a GPT. To get started, we're gonna come back to the Agent Builder main dashboard. This is on platform.openai.com slash agent builder. This is the main work page. We're just gonna create a workflow. That's sort of what the individual page is called. And we're gonna hit the button right here. Once we've done that, we're gonna land on the canvas right here. And we're gonna get two nodes pop up automatically with the start node and the first agent node. Now for our particular example, we're using this first agent as a classification agent. So we're sending in a particular request and based on all the different types of information that we know are most likely to come through in the different category types within an organization, 
That is what the agent is going to be classifying against. So first I'm gonna update the name here of this particular agent to the classifier. Obviously you can name it whatever you want. That's not necessary, but this is just a naming convention for your own convenience. And then below this, I'm gonna paste in a prompt right here, although I'm gonna run through everything about this prompt and exactly why it is what it is. I'll jump into full screen as well for the prompt with the expand prompt button, just makes it a bit easier to have a look at. This is a very simple prompt for the classification and I'll tell you why we don't have to make it too complicated in just a second. But otherwise, this particular prompt says, please classify the user's request. We have four different categories this request can be assigned with. Either production, inventory optimization, logistics and transportation, or supply chain network. So with this, the AI now has a choice that based on the question or based on whatever it's given, it needs to classify that bit of information into one of these four categories. Once you've added in this particular instruction set for whatever types of categories that you're looking to add, we don't need to modify anything below this We're using the model of GPT-5. That's gonna be one of the most powerful models that we can use for this. Below that, we've got the reasoning effort currently set to low. This is not gonna be the most complex task for these models. So we definitely don't have to increase this. By increasing it, it will increase our token amount and it will cost more money to do so. So I would recommend if it is a, a low task, not that big of a deal, we can set it to low. We're not gonna add any tools to this particular agent, but what we are gonna do is change the output format. Currently, by default, it is set to text. And if it is set to text, it just means it's going to output some set of words, which in our case, we could make that work. We could tell it to output the text of the category that it wants to assign to. And then based on that, it can go down that flow. Although this isn't the most reliable way to do it, it's very likely that we would need to add a bit more prompting to ensure that it does that every time. It's likely these AR models will add extra text as they always sort of want to talk back. So it's always gonna add other notes and text to its output and that makes it incredibly unreliable. But a really key feature here on the OpenAI Agent Builder is the fact that we can change the output format to JSON. And when we do that, it's gonna prompt us to add a schema. And if I click in this particular button here, we're gonna get a structured output response, big box here that allows us to really tailor exactly the responses that we're gonna get. So we are literally going to be able to restrict our agent from only outputting one of those four values that we set before. This means it's gonna be far more reliable. It's not going to say anything that it shouldn't. It's just gonna pick one of the outputs and display. So in this particular page right here, we can click add property and we can create a bunch of properties and we can change the property types as well. Although the best way and the easiest way to do this is actually just to use the generate button in the bottom left here. And we can just describe exactly what we're looking for and it is going to generate that for us. So if I just quickly jump out of this box right here and look into the instruction set, I'm gonna go ahead and copy the two lines that we have right here. Click add schema. I'm gonna click on generate and paste that right here. And below this, what I'm gonna do is just tell it to assign one value only. So only choose one value. And the reason we're doing that is because there are obviously many different ways that we can assign values and output values using the structured output JSON tool right here. But what we're specifically looking for is to have four different values that could be assigned, but only one of them is going to be assigned. So let's go ahead and click the create button right here. And this should go ahead and give us a category property right here. So perfect. This did exactly what we're looking for. So we've got one value called category and based on whatever the agent decides from the input it received, it is going to assign one of these four labels to this particular variable you can think of it. And then we can reference that later in the flow. It's even generated its own prompt here, which says assigned category for the request, only one value allowed. So this is a prompt that it's given itself to just reinforce exactly what we're doing here. So that's all that we need to do. The generate button is a big time saver and we're gonna hit the update button. Once you've done that, the classification agent is now complete. And the next thing that we're gonna do is jump into the if else logic. And this is going to allow us to take our JSON output with our individual value and then conditionally using the if else function right here, determine which value it is and based on which value it is, go down a different pathway. So once you've dragged this node on the canvas, what we can do is then drag and connect these both together. Then we can click into this particular module and in the top right, we can get the if else condition steps. And what we're gonna need to do is obviously add in a few more here. So the way that the if else step works is that we set a condition and the condition says, if this value is equal to this particular value, we're gonna go down one pathway. If another value is equal to a different value, we'll go down a different pathway, which is the else if. And then we also have a final else step. So if none of the conditions match anything that we've set out, it's gonna go down this step no matter what. 
You'll get a better understanding when I build it right now. So what we can do is jump into these conditions and start to map them out. Just looking at the top one right here, if we go ahead and build this out for a particular flow, we can click into the box and you're gonna see this sort of side tab pop up and it is going to have all of the values and variables that we've generated previously in the flow. So the one that we just created from our classifier agent is going to be this right here with the category. So if I click on this, we're gonna get input dot output underscore past dot category. Looks a bit confusing, but this is essentially the variable that our value from the previous agent is now assigned to. And if we wanna set this condition to essentially say if that particular output from our agent is equal to a certain value and go down that pathway, all we need to do is use this comparisons logic step right here. Click on this and this just means equal to. And then we can do double quotations. You're gonna see it turns purple, which just sort of references a string value, which is just another word for text. And in this particular double quotations, I'm gonna add in inventory optimization. So this is one of the values that we're gonna be using and could be assigned from our classification agent. So if I jump out of this, you'll see our classifier agent has inventory optimization as one of the categories that it could choose. And if it does choose it, then this pathway is going to be triggered. And just a quick tip, if we have a look at the box above this one right here, this is called case name, and this is just for our own naming convention. I like to just copy the value that we're looking to reference and just pasting it up here. You'll see on the canvas that it updates here as well. So it just makes it look a lot more neat, a lot more organized. So this first condition and flow is now complete. We can now copy some of these values and paste them into the next one to build out the other flows as well. So the process is exactly the same, although we're now just gonna be referencing a different value based on what the agent would have assigned previously. So I can swap this over to production right here, production, and I can change the case name to production as well. So now we've got our first classification agent and we've now set up our if else step to go down different pathways based on the classification from our first agent. From this particular step, we are now gonna need a new set of agents to classify our request or answer it depending on what you're looking to build. We had the first agent which classified the sort of broader request. It then moved that into an agent which classified that into a more niche request. And then finally we landed on the agent which was most relevant to that particular inquiry. So this agent right here is simply going to be another classification agent related exactly to the pathway that we're going down to. I can copy inventory optimization. I can add that as the name here just to make it super easy. I can drag it from here and I can connect it into this. And then I'm gonna copy and paste in a prompt right here, which is exactly the same as the classification one before, just updated to the new values that we wanna use for the next agents. So jumping into this prompt, you'll see, please classify the user's request. We have three different categories this request can be assigned with, either demand forecast, inventory planning, or visibility and control. So once again, it's exactly the same. We only have three categories this time related to these three values right here. I'm gonna copy this text. We're gonna be using it to generate our schema once again. I'll jump into the output format, swap it over to JSON, jump into the schema, jump into the generate button, paste this right here. I'm once again gonna reiterate that we only want one value out of it. So I'm gonna tell it that. So please only assign one value. I'll hit create and it should very quickly generate the exact same schema as before. And there we go. So we've got category assignment, category, and we've got the three values that we gave it. It's even given it the description once again. So I can hit the update button and that is now complete for the JSON structure output from this agent. Obviously, if you're building this for a real use, then you would be able to then add in your other agents as well and connect these flows to these other agents. And you could add in as many steps here as you would want to. And you could add in all of the conditions to target all of these different agents for all of the different requests uh, within the organization. This agent is now complete and we can move on to the next if else step, which is going to be once again, just taking the outputs that we were able to classify with the previous agent and then determining which pathway to go down to finally meet the agent, which is going to answer the user's question. Once again, we can click into the box here and we can click into the box to get the variables to pop up. In some cases, it actually doesn't pop up for whatever reason, I think it's just a visual glitch, but you can just add in a curly bracket and it's gonna pop up uh, just the same way. So I'll add in the variable for the category that we just got in the previous step, which is input.output underscore past.category. We'll click on the equals sign once again, and then we can assign this to the values that we're expecting to get out of it. In our case, one of them will be demand forecast. So I'll paste that in here and I'm also gonna add it as the case name. And now we've got it populated as a module. We can also add in others for the inventory planning as well as the visibility and control. So I can add them in and I can copy these values, add them as the case names just to make it super organized. 
And there we go. Once that's done, we're ready to go. We can finally get to our end of the flow here with the agent that is gonna be best to answer this question. We can move from demand forecast into this agent, which is gonna be related to demand forecast. So I'm gonna copy this, add it to the agent name. And then we're just gonna set it up like our typical GPT, but it's obviously going to be focused around demand forecasting. So just for demonstration purposes, I went to ChatGPT and I generated this document right here, which is like an internal knowledge base document about random demand forecasting um, information for just a random company, very generalized information here with a scope, with a bunch of definitions, um, bits of random data that we can reference just to, just to showcase the purpose of referencing information. If you don't wanna bother making your own document, I'll actually have that document linked below in my school group. We've got over 18,000 members now. We've got 50 plus AI agent templates and courses. It's completely free, so please join. So to add our file search, we just have to add it as a tool. We'll click the plus button down here and click on file search. This is going to pop up and it just says, drag your files here or click to upload. I can click the upload button and just add it from my computer. Once you've done that, the document name is going to pop up at the top here. We can obviously add multiple documents as well. They do have some advanced options here for the specific document, which can be very good. The way in which that these knowledge base systems work is that when we upload a document, it goes through a process of chunking. So it's gonna take our document, it's gonna split it up into a bunch of different bits. And then based on the query that comes through, it's gonna decide which chunk is most relevant to that question. And so ultimately the bigger the chunk is, the more accurate it's going to be, the more likely that it's gonna find the response to your question. But obviously if we increase the chunk size, it is going to use some more tokens. And if we use more tokens, it just means it's going to cost more money. Below this, we've got a chunk overlap setting. This is ultimately against cutting off sentences or cutting off paragraphs midway. Essentially, it's going to take the same information and have it in between multiple different chunks. It just makes sure that the most amount of context is included in each chunk. So once you've configured that particular document and you've added it to the agent, the last thing is just to add in our instruction set. Now this instruction set, can be very specific. That's gonna be the big benefit of using this entire system is the fact that this instruction set can be specific to, in our case, demand forecasting. It can be specific to whatever you'd like it to be. And we can really tailor the query to get the most out of our document. For example, I could tell it that it's a demand forecasting expert. So I could say, you are a demand forecasting expert. You will take the user's inquiry and reference the uploaded documents. Because we have this entire instruction set for our context window, we can pretty much add as much information into that instruction set as we possibly can. If there is anything super important related to demand forecasting or whatever particular build you're looking to do, I would definitely recommend taking advantage of the system prompt here and the instruction set that you have and just adding in that extra bit of context. Once again, it's the whole reason that we're using a multi-agent system. We want to be able to have these individual agents with as much context as possible so they can actually understand that inquiry to its best extent and get the best answer possible. Now that the first workflow here is done from start to finish, we can pretty much then add in our additional agents. As I have on the previous example here, we can just start to add in our additional agents and then have them go down the different pathways based on the conditions that they set. So we'll obviously need to give it a brand new prompt and give it a brand new set of categories to assign to. And then based on that, it's going to go down the particular pathway that it, that it decides to go down. Just to get it to look how it did before, we can add in other agents just like this. We can jump into here and add in additional steps and connect them to this agent. These additional agents would then need their own if else step right here with another set of conditions to determine which set of agents they would be running into. So what we would have is once again, just a bunch of other conditions right here. These would then feed into a whole new set of agents relevant to the query that we've determined it needs to be answered with. And our flow would obviously start to get a little bit more complicated, a little bit more busy as we start to add in all of the agents relevant to all of the different types of inquiries that could be coming through. You can see that it does start to get a little bit more full on as we start to add in these other conditions and we start to add in all the other agents. But this is going to be one of the best setups to get that level of control if you have lots of knowledge based documents and these documents can be tailored to individual agents. A setup like this is going to make it a far better experience. If you are a business owner and you're looking to get one of these systems built out for your business, feel free to reach out with me using the link in the description. And just by checking my YouTube analytics, I can see that the majority of you watching the video right now aren't subscribed. So if you could check if you're subscribed, subscribe to the channel, like the video as well, that would mean everything. And if you'd like to see more content on the OpenAI Agent Builder, let me know in the comments below.